Okay, this is the amendment video to the end tab. You're going to, after you've finished form A, B, C, or F, you're going to get into the cab with three points of contact. Two hands and one foot, or two feet and one hand. Turn towards the cab, get in the seat, and shut your door. You're now going to perform your light test. So, the inspector's going to stand out front. He's going to ask you to turn the lights on one by one. You need to turn the key on one click. You should hear buzzers. You're going to start out by the light switch here. You're going to turn it one click and say clearance lights, marker lights, and tail lights in a loud, clear voice so he can hear you. Once he notices that the clearance lights on the tractor and the trailer were, are functioning, he'll give me a thumbs up or tell me yes by a verbal command. And then you move on. Headlights low beam. Once he gives me his hand gesture or verbal command, I will go headlights high beam as I, you can see the indicator right there, it's blue. Once he gives me a thumbs up, I'm going to shut the headlights off. First the high beams off, then the headlights all off. Now you turn on your right or left turn signal. Right turn signal. Then left or right turn signal, left turn signal. Have your turn signal centered, and then you can pull out your four-way flashers. Notice the indicators on the dash. To cancel your hazard, all you have to do is either turn your signal on left or right, and it cancels the, the hazard. Okay, then he's going to move to the rear of the vehicle, and he's going to be checking both sides of the trailer, and underneath to see that the tractor lights are all working. So we're going to start over. In a loud, clear voice where he can hear me, clearance lights, marker lights, and tail lights. Once he goes to one side and, and back and then underneath, give me a thumbs up. I'll check him in the mirror. Then you can shut those lights off because he doesn't need to see your headlights. They're in the front. He's in the rear. Next is going to be right or left turn signal, right turn signal. Give him plenty of time so he can look underneath the, at the rear of the trailer and look underneath to see that the tractor's working as well. Left turn signal. Again, I'll wait for his hand gesture or verbal command. Four way flashers. Once he gives you the signal, shut him off. Brakes. Brake lights. Once he checks all that, He's going to give you the command. You can release him. Turn your key off. He's going to come and join you in the cab. And he's going to join, when he gets in, he's going to shut his door and he's going to say, okay, now is the end cab portion of your test. You must name all of the parts that are critical within the cab of the vehicle. And some of the parts are on the outside of the vehicle. You must do all four brake tests without failure. This is why it's an amendment video, because it used to be a six brake part. We used to have six brake tests, now there's only four. So, he's going to ask me if I have any questions. If you have any questions, like you want to change the order, you don't like the way the order is, that's fine. Ask him right then if you can change the order, you want to do your brakes first, whatever you want to do, this is the time to ask him. Because in, unless you fail a test and you catch it and you ask for permission to, re to redo that test, he is, that is the only time he is going to answer you. Otherwise, he is not going to talk to you until you're finished. The only thing he's going to ask you is, are you finished? Okay. So, if I have no questions, you'll say you may proceed when ready. So, I always say, this is my tractor and trailer spring brakes. They're always in the lock position, fully, fully pulled out when the vehicle is not moving. Next this is going to be my seat. It is securely mounted, and it's adjusted to my driving. We don't need to mention his. Then we're going to go on to the seat belts. My seat belts are securely mounted to the upper and lower mount on both sides because we do have to mention the belts on both sides. And both belts are not cut, cracked, or frayed. And they both lock and unlock easily. From here on out, you're going to need your seat belt on. So go ahead and get a good, get a good and firm around you. Then we're going to go to our fire extinguisher, which is on the left-hand side of us right by the door. Fire extinguisher, it is securely mounted. It is fully charged. It is of the proper rating of 10 BC or greater. There's a, a safety pin that is in place and it has a current date code on the fire extinguisher. I have three reflective emergency triangles that are present and in good condition stowed right here in this box. Burning flares, fuses, and breakers stowed right here within the cab for easy access in case of an emergency. 
My floor is clean and free of debris. There is nothing to obstruct the safe operation of my accelerator, my service brake, or my clutch pedal. So you don't want something rolling around in here that's gonna get underneath your brake, that's gonna cause you not to be able to use your brake and stop the vehicle. That's why we have our floors clean. Next is gonna be my shifter. It is securely mounted and it shifts smoothly. You can also say if you want, it's not cracked, damaged, been or broken. That's what the old video did. My shifting boot is secured to my floor with a good seal. It is not cracked or damaged and it has no leaks. Then we're gonna come up here and we're gonna go city horn and highway horn. You must honk them. Then we're gonna go out to our window glass. My window glass on both sides is securely is secured within the frame of each door. Both go up and down easily. Both are clean, not cracked or damaged, no illegal stickers and no obstructions. Soft rubber seal is present around the window of each door and is in good condition with no leaks. My mirrors are secured to the cab by nuts and bolts on both sides. All nuts and bolts are present and tight. My brackets are not cracked or damaged on both sides. My mirrors are clean. They are not cracked or damaged. They have no illegal stickers and no obstructions and both sides are adjusted to my driving. This is my windshield. It's secured to the cab with a rubber seal. The rubber soft and in good condition with no leaks. My windshield is clean. It is not cracked or damaged. Has no illegal stickers or obstructions. Now, let me explain this. If the DMV or DOT gives you a sticker and wants it put right here, that's fine. Lower corners are fine. If you have something like you love the Raiders like I do, you might want to put that up here in your sun, sun area. That's fine. But this area here cannot be obstructed. That's what that means. Okay. Next, we're going to talk about our windshield wipers. They are securely mounted on both sides. The blades are not cracked or damaged. The rubber soft and they operate smoothly. From there, we come back into the cab and we turn our key on one click. Now we're going to explain that ABS light right there. This is my tractor's ABS light. It says tractor ABS. When that light were to stay on, it means I have a problem with the tractor's ABS. I also have a malfunction lamp on the left rear quarter panel of the trailer. If that light were to come on and stay on, it means I have a problem with the trailer's ABS. Either one could be a bad sensor, fuse, or wiring. But either one, I could still drive without my ABS functioning properly because I still have my normal service brakes. Okay, I would just need to tell whoever the maintenance person is or myself and get it fixed before the next trip. So it's not gonna stop you from taking a load somewhere if you get into a vehicle and you don't have ABS, but you need to be aware of it. Okay, if he asks you what ABS stands for, you need to tell him. ABS stands for anti-lock braking system. All vehicles manufactured after March 1998 are required to have anti-lock brake systems. Anti-lock brakes keep the wheels from locking and the tires from skidding. They're in addition to my normal service brakes. So that means that if I lose my ABS, I still have my normal service brakes. I can still drive the vehicle. I just need to get them fixed once again. Okay, now we're going to do our lights and we're going to be basically we have to go through the entire light scheme again because he's looking for the dash indicators now we're not doing them for the outside we're doing them for in here so you still have to go marker lights clearance lights and tail lights don't need to shout he's right next to you no changes have occurred to this dash if it was night you would see the da dash would illuminate but it's, it's light out so you won't see it then you're going to go on to headlights low beam still nothing changed but when we say headlights high beam, there's our indicator. You may need to shade that so he can get a clear look at that because that's what he's looking for. Once he sees it, you can shut that off and turn your lights completely off. Now we're gonna go on to, I like to go with my right side turn signal. You can see the indicator right there on the dash. Then I like to go with my left side turn signal. And you can see the indicator right there on the dash. Now I'm going to go to the four-way flashers, and you can see those indicators right there on the dash. Once you're done, shut them off by turning the turn signal either up or down, right or to the left, and that cancels the hazards. Next is going to be our windshield wipers. They, you push the top button in once, my windshield wipers function properly. Then the lower button, if you hold it, your windshield washer fluid is going to come on, clean your windshield, and it functions properly. Then just hit the top button one time, that'll shut everything off. So my windshield wipers and my windshield washer fluid comes on, cleans my windshield, and functions properly. That's a critical part. 
If you don't have windshield washer fluid in the vehicle, it does not, or the windshield wipers do not work, you will get flagged. It's not going to change your. It's not. You, you're probably going to be able to finish your end cap, but he's not going to let you drive the vehicle because it's a critical part. You must be able to clean your windshield. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about our fan. This is also a critical part. My fan. And when I turn the heater to 12 o'clock, that's the heater. And to 3 o'clock is the defroster. You don't need to say that, so we're going to start over. This is my fan, my heater, and my defroster. My cold, hot selector switch all function properly. They blow on my windshield, and it functions properly. Now shut that off. Now you're going to perform a safe start. To perform a safe start, you need to verbalize what you're doing. So that way he doesn't have any kind of guesswork as to what you're, what's this guy doing? So when I do a safe start, I always check to see that my spring brakes are always in the locked position, fully popped out. Then I'm going to fully engage my clutch and I'm gonna place the vehicle into neutral. Then I can start my engine. I don't need to have my foot on my brake and I can release my clutch because my vehicle's in neutral and my brakes are in the locked position. So now we're going to talk about all of our gauges and how they function and what the parameters are for their function. This is my oil pressure gauge. Normal operating range is between 40 and 60 PSI. My gauge functions properly. This is my water temperature gauge. Normal operating range is below 200, 200 degrees Fahrenheit. It is functioning properly. This is my tachometer. It is functioning properly. Normal readings. This is my speedometer. When I place the vehicle in motion, I will show you that it functions properly. Could be on your rolling service brake test or when you go out on the road, make sure you let him know that that functions properly. This is my tachometer. It's right below the odometer. Normal operating range is between 12 and 14 volts. It's at 14 volts and it functions properly. This is my fuel gauge. It's functioning properly and I have enough fuel to safely make this trip. Even if I'm down here to one eighth of a tank, there's still 20 gallons in these tanks. You still would have enough fuel to safely make this trip. Okay, this is my primary and my secondary air supply gauges. If you heard that sound right there, that was my air compressor cutting out at 126 on the primary. It cuts out at 127, 126, 125. Give the reading on the primary. When you hear it cut out, that is a must do. Not a test, but if you don't say it, they'll fail you. So my air compressor cut out at 126 on my primary. My air, this is my primary air supply gauge or air pressure gauge and my secondary air supply or air pressure gauge. Both are at normal readings and they are functioning properly. For all of my tests, I will only be using my primary air supply gauge. Here's why. Because on your secondary, it is exactly what it says, secondary. It's, it's used for parts like the airbags, which always leak. Airbags leak, it's just the way it is. Your seat has an airbag, it leaks. So, that gauge would not be correct. That's why we always use the primary. Okay, so now we're going to do our first set of tests. Our first set of tests is gonna be my three brake tests. So, I'm going to engage the clutch fully. I place the vehicle into low gear. I check my mirrors to make sure no kids have gotten up underneath the vehicle. Then I release my trailer brake and I'm going to release the clutch and tug against my tractor. So when I hear the RPM go or the vehicle tug, just like that, my tractor did not move. This is a good test. Now I engage my trailer and I release my tractor. Again, I'm going to release my clutch until I hear the RPM go up or the vehicle tug. My trailer did not move. This is a good test. So now I'm going to release both my tractor and trailer spring brakes and I'm going to do my rolling service brake test. It should be at less than five miles an hour and you really only have about seven to twelve feet in front of you because when you go to the DMV you're probably going to be behind another truck and he's only going to be about twelve feet in front of you at the most. So. Now I'm going to do my rolling service brake test. Both my pop-outs are, are released and I'm going to place the vehicle in motion. I'm going to roll it no, no more than five miles an hour. 
when I apply my brakes, my service brakes should stop the vehicle and this wheel should not shift from side to side. So we're going to give it a little bit of acceleration and we only need to go a little bit out, lightly apply your brakes. When my service brakes, when I applied my brakes, my service brakes stopped the vehicle, it did not shift from side to side and you can see my speedometer worked. This is a good test. You don't need to back up, you stay right where you're at, engage both of your brakes, place the vehicle in neutral and now you must fully charge your system back to cutout. If for some reason your needles do not move, release air below 100. You can tell him, my needles did not move, I need to release air below 100 and now my air compressor is going to kick on and start up. If it's moving, you don't need to do that. Okay? So now we're going to we're going to speed it up by going uh, increasing the RPM between 1000 and 1200 RPM and we're just waiting for this needle to cut out again at 127, 126 or 125, give him the correct reading wherever it cuts out. My air compressor cut out at 126 and I'm now going to place the vehicle, engage the clutch, place the vehicle in low gear and I'm going to shut the engine off. Wait till it fully comes to a stop, release your clutch and turn your key back one click to the right, that's critical. If you don't hear buzzers, you're doing something wrong. Okay, now I'm going to release both of my tractor and trailer spring brakes. Remember, we're in gear, we're not gonna roll. I wait for the needles to settle. That's what you're gonna tell him. Your needles should settle on your primary somewhere between 104 and 110. We're right about 108, which is fine. Now, my, I'm going to tell him, I'm going to press and hold the brake and wait for the needle to settle and I will give you the reading and start my one minute applied air leak test. It doesn't actually start till you start the start button on the timer which is on the right side. So, you got your timer all zeroed out. I press, I tell him I'm gonna press and hold the brake, which I do, and you gotta give this needle because it, at below 100 it wants to creep back two to three PSI. It's not gonna go back above 100 so it'll probably stop right there at 100, all right? When the needle settles, which is going to stop at 100, it can't go further than that, okay? My needle settled at 100 PSI on my primary. I'm now going to begin my one minute applied air leak test. So, when my timer started, I say on a single axle vehicle, a straight truck or a bus with the brakes applied, I should have an air loss rate of no more than 3 PSI in one minute. The examiner has to see the stopwatch as well as you, so hold it in a manner that he can. On a combination vehicle like this one with the brakes applied, I should have an air loss rate of no more than 4 PSI in one minute. And on a combination vehicle that has double or triple trailers attached to it, with the brakes applied, I should have an air loss rate of no more than 6 PSI in one minute. You're going to wait till exactly one minute, holding the brake down the entire time. Once it gets to exactly one minute, you don't want to be to 101. We have examiners that will fail you if you go over the time, which is a joke, but it's not when you fail. So at one minute, I'm going to press the stop button on this side, start and stop are the same, and release the brakes at the same time. So my needle stayed at 100 PSI on my primary. I lost zero PSI in one minute. This is a good test. If for some reason you lost one PSI, my, you need to tell him, my needle moved from nine, one, 100 PSI to 99 PSI. I lost one pound in one minute with the brakes applied. It's still a good test. You can lose up to four. So if I'm at 100, I can go to 96 and still be a good test. However, if it goes to 95, you would have to say, my needle moved from 100 to 95. This is not a good test. I lost... 5 PSI in one minute, you can only lose 4 for a combination vehicle. Then you would say, may I please start this test over. If you do what I just told you, you caught the mistake, he will allow you to do it over again. You're going to have to perform a safe start by popping these out, engaging the clutch, placing the vehicle back into neutral, starting the engine, and waiting for the air compressor to fully charge the system and cut out. You'll have to say it cut out again where it cuts out. Then you're going to place the vehicle in low gear, shut the engine off again, turn the key back on one click, release both of these again, and wait for the needles to settle again. Should be between 104 and 110 on the primary. 
then you're going to, again, pull this back in your hand. Tell him I'm going to now press and hold the brake and give the reading when the needle settles and then start my one minute applied air leak test. So you're going to have to do that entire thing over again. That will keep you from failing. And you may have to do it however many times. If it goes more than twice, we probably have air, I mean, water in the lines or something, or maybe a glad hands loose or something. So we can just do little checks. He's not going to fail you. As long as you catch it, he's not going to fail you. All right. So now, our next test, after all that commentary, our next test is going to be our low-pressure warning light and buzzer. We're totally set up for our next test right now. So, because we have the key on one click, and our brakes are engaged right where we left them. So my low-pressure warning light and buzzer should come on before 55 PSI. That's all you need to say. I'm now going to fan the brakes and release air. And as you do, when you hear that buzzer, pump one more time. Give the reading where it, where the light, warning light and buzzer came on. My warning light and buzzer came on at 68 PSI on the primary. This is a good test. If you do not do that, what's going to happen? If you stop right when you hear the buzzer, it's going to be so close to 75, it's going to shut out before you get the words that this is a good test out, most likely. Okay. Our next test is going to be both of my automatic spring brakes must pop before 20 PSI. Okay, this is my automatic spring brake thing test. So I'm going to fan the brakes again and release air. If for some reason my red trailer button or trailer knob pops before my yellow tractor knob, stop where it, stop immediately. Give the reading off the primary where the trailer popped and continue to pump until the tractor pops. They both pop at the same time. If you do steady, even pumps, they're gonna they're most likely gonna pop at the same time. So both my tractor and trailer spring brakes popped out at 28 PSI on my primary. This is a good test. Now you've completed all of your brake tests and all of the end cap. What you're gonna need to do now, he'll tell you if you if you passed, he's gonna say. Let's get ready to go out on the road and do skills. If he, if he tells you, let's go inside the DMV, well, then you failed. Okay, he's not you're most likely going to tell you any time you failed until he's on the other side of that glass. Because they don't want you taking off on him or doing something crazy. Which I don't blame him there. All right. So, if he says, we're ready to go out, get ready to go out on the skills, you're going to perform a safe start. Again, I check my tractor and trailer spring brakes. Even though I know they pop, this is the proper way of doing it. If you do it this way, you'll never have a problem. Check my tractor and trailer spring brakes to be fully engaged when the vehicle's not moving. I fully engage my clutch and place my vehicle into neutral, and I start my engine up. And I'm just gonna let the clutch out and bring the RPM up between 1,000 and 1,200 to speed up the air compressor. I gotta go all the way till it cuts out again and give the reading where it cuts out. This is the last time you should have to do it. So if you do it right, you should have one time the air compressor should cut out when you first start the vehicle, when you're getting ready to do your three brake tests. After you do your brake tests, you're going to engage your brakes and fully charge the system again. You're gonna to need to say that the air compressor cut out again wherever it cuts out on the primary. And your last time should be when you're getting ready to go out on your road after you do your safe start, you're going to wait for the air compressor to cut out again, and you're going to give the reading where it cuts out. That's the three times they want. After that, you don't need to say it cuts out while you're driving or any of that other stuff. It's all good from here on out. Be safe out there, guys. Thank you.